resume the recording. The recording is now on. Um, and I'll do the introduction. So welcome everybody. Welcome to the Jenkins Advocacy and Outreach SIG. Today is April 7th, 2022. So on the agenda, we have Raj discuss, discussing, joining us to discuss this course for She Code Africa. And then we'll go briefly over um, the removal of Jenkins is the way on the Jumbotron, uh, Ukraine invasion by Russia on the Jenkins and the Jenkins project, excuse me. Um, Google Summer of Code update, She Code Africa update, and CDCon update. I wonder um, if we I'm sorry, to... am I share I'm not sharing my screen, am I? Exactly. I just wanted to say you're it. not, but I but just realized that. After after Raj's segment, could we put a put a topic there for since we've got the benefit of Gavin being here to talk about stories.jenkins.io and Jenkins is the way? Absolutely. Uh, I... Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Gavin, are you okay with that as a topic? Just that way yep. we can share at least what you shared with us at Governance Board. Yep. Great. Okay. All right. Um, so the first item is all yours, um, Raj. Okay, so a little bit about myself. I am Raj Garo, sophomore at the University of London, and I am tinkering with electronics and computers from very early childhood. Uh, my current skill set includes full stack web and mobile development, IoT and electronics engineering, uh, along with proficiency in system design, computer networks, architecture, Linux, and more. Uh, apart from my tech skills, I have five plus years of trading experience in various markets such as crypto, equity, forex, and more. Uh, I recently interned as a software engineer at Anthrium Tum. Uh, which is a part of Technical University of Munich and Antrium Tum is like the biggest incubation center in the whole Europe. And now I am, you know, acting as a mentor at She Road Africa from Layer 5 organization. And yeah, uh, for this particular program at She Code Africa, we are going to improve our discussion forum, which is totally based on uh, discourse platform. So Discourse, you know, provides like a boiler plate kind of thing for discussion forum. Uh, let's suppose we need to build a discuss forum. There are, you know, lots of lots of ways to do it. And still, you need to, you know, just build an entire team to build your discussion forum. But what you can do is install discourse, um, configure your DNS settings along with your domain name. And yes, you have your, you know, community server or discussion forum running within a few minutes. So uh, at She Code Africa program, we are going to build a later board system to encourage more people to contribute at our discussion forum. Yep. Sorry, we can't hear you. Tell, tell us something about the, about the kinds of, so it's, is most of your focus at, in the layer five work on discourse around discussion forums and what sorts of things are you envisioning doing there? Uh, for this you know, particular program, for this particular She Code Africa program, we are going to improve our discussion forum, which is based on discourse. And one of the, one of, part of our discussion forum is, you know, uh, introducing a leaderboard to encourage more people to contribute at our discussion forum in various forms. Uh, also, we are uh, uh, planning to build uh, beginner friendly docs to help newcomers uh, get uh, introduced to the whole project and try to contribute to the project as soon as possible. As layer five, I'll have a lot of projects. Uh, we are working on docs for each of them. So the leaderboard that you're implementing, are you envisioning that would be a, a way of, of ranking people who are 
responding to or involved in the forum is that it helps encourage them to respond or to be involved mm -hmm. by highlighting oh so and so is is this level and is that the kind of thing yeah, yeah. and it's concentrated on a discourse so no input from outside of discourse so the leaderboard is only concentrated on discourse uh yes we are you know getting all of the data we require uh from the discourse database itself good okay, okay. and the new contributor documentation this is contributor on this course how to interact with this course or with a project uh, uh, what is a new go ahead mm -hmm. yeah can you please repeat your question gene so uh the, the the question is what do you mean with new contributor is a new contributor somebody who joins the discussion board or is mm -hmm. it a new contributor to the project uh, itself by new contributor we mean anybody who joins layer 5 you know slack space or uh, forum and uh we are you know trying to encourage more people to you know uh, post about our project to post uh, guides here to help them you know get introduced to the project so i interpret that raj then to mean that you're you're encourage you're use that you'll use this new contributor documentation to encourage pull requests to encourage um, documentation pull requests or code pull requests or other advocacy kind of kind of things in addition to discourse answers and forum posts. Did I did I understand correctly? Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Now I'm I'm wondering, I'm fairly new to this new uh, to this kind of discussion. So do you, does your project have a, a classical static uh, website where documentation is available? Do you have that? And, and so is it an additional functionality you're looking with this course? Or uh, uh, is it something that was missing in your project? Okay, so you know, so far, whatever documentation or whatever startup guide we have is only you know present on our GitHub repository, and each repository can have only at at most one README file to you know display on the homepage. So with this discourse platform, uh, we are going to you know <clears throat> have a lot of guides to help contributors to get started with the project. And right now we are having those guides on our Slack channels, but Slack is not, you know, very efficient way to post guides or have conversation on it. And discuss is, you know, just attracts more people and it is much more beneficial to use. Okay. So in terms of ours, the, the distinction there is we've got a documentation site already that is, is relatively mature and existed long before our discourse site's great. Gavin, were there any questions you wanted to ask of Raj? Not specifically. Um, it's, the discussions did spur some things for me. Um, I know one of the things I want to do, um, which may or may not lean into this, is auto linkify any um oh, i can't think of the word right now uh the pipeline step anytime someone mentions a pipeline step so let's say archive artifact or i don't know j unit it would link directly to the documentation site so that people don't have to go find the docs and stuff like that um you know uh i don't think we want to put docs into the discord but I do think we want to have a very tight integration so that when someone mentions something, it goes, it's, I want to make the experience easier for people um, to use discourse over something else. Yeah. So that you would have a suggestion when you're, you're typing a message or you want to reference something that you would have a helper. 
Yeah, I don't know if you can do a suggestion. I think it's literally like if it finds this word, link it. So it'll be some of them that like the word echo probably will be wrong most of the time. But most of the others probably are pretty unique and pretty safe. But I don't think like I know there's a discussion you're talking about like bringing documentation in there. And I don't think we want to make like discourse the central CMS for the entire project. And it doesn't sound like Raj is doing that either. It's just it's just the, you know, permanent discussions, better searching Slack and, and any sort of chat is not for permanent discussions. They, you know, they scroll by so quickly and then you have to go back and find the threads and stuff, you know, yeah. Thanks, Gavin. Raj, thank you very much. Uh, are um, there, oh, go ahead. So I guess I had to do, you said you had the leaderboard for the discourse. Do you, is that something that you can share? Um, I was trying to dig through ours and there's no way to get, I thought there was a way to get a report of who answered what and how many times, like a stack overflow type thing, but I can't find it. Uh, give me a minute. Oh. Can even give it immediately. I feel like it's built into Discourse, but I can't find it. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, and and Raj, uh, if you do, I, I there have posted you have. the link. Ah, uh, okay. So that, yeah, that is built into Discord. Excellent. Okay. Discord. Okay. okay. Can I ask one more question to Raj, and and uh, don't want the experience. Um, so. Well, as you would guess, I'm old and I'm used to mailing lists and, and things uh, uh, like that. And uh, we're currently experimenting and I would like to hear your experience there. Uh, uh, having closed groups, discussion groups, but by that we have the additional mechanism of pinging the people make sure that the people read uh, uh, the message. Do you have that kind of problem yes. to solve? And and what is your experience with that? Uh, on discourse, you know, we can tag people uh, on particular uh, uh, topic or discussion we are having, so that you know they will get notification. And, and this works and this is a mechanism that, that replaces mailing lists well. I'm not sure whether, you know, uh, that can replace the mailing list uh, because it's about trade-off, whether you want to get uh, email or not. Uh, but, you know, if someone tags you on discourse and you are locked in, in your discourse and you open up the discussion forum, you will have a little icon with numbers that you are having such amount of notification and yeah. you can and you sorry i can speak to that um because i've done i've done a bunch of research for the press email um 100 of features that mailing lists provide uh discourse can provide um a lot of that has to do with configuration of your own account so for the GSOC mentors list, uh, I set it up so that um, every new post would automatically notify every member of the group, which is what mm -hmm. you wanted, right? What I, what I wanted, yes. But, you know, you can actually, so I have like, I think I have the community form personally set up so that every reply, every message emails me. And actually it doesn't technically email me, it notifies me. If I'm not online, then it emails me. So the, the the configuration is very user specific. Um, like a mailing list, the only option is to get emailed. But you know, like if during the day I leave this course open, then it will ping a browser pop up as opposed to an email, because that's the configuration that's set by default. You can change it. That's all changeable. It's all customizable. You can have every message email you. Um, but the nice thing is you can either use the 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 discourse form, the website, or reply by email. Both of those work just fine. So it's essentially, it's it's a level up from mailing list. And you can actually, I was talking to support people, you can actually import, not import, uh, connect discourse to a mailing list and have like a read-only archive and stuff like that. So there's lots of stuff we haven't um, 
uh, investigated and, and experienced yet, but that is something that, you know, it's it's designed to work as a mailing would, but just better. But okay, and we don't have in the notifications when we use mail. Obviously, uh, we we don't have the problem that it lands into too easily in spam folders from people. That. I agree. I've never had an issue with this course going to spam or the dev mail list and everyone, a lot of other people have. So yeah. mailing list is, mail is hard and I don't know how to, like, that's not something that we can say. Yeah. Okay. Well, but at least uh, if you have the browser window open, you can see the new post and with the mailing list, it's hard to, you have to open groups and I don't keep, I don't stay on groups very often. It's, it's a difference between push and pull. And it, obviously this course is trying to find a balance yep. Uh, yep. between the two and, and looks interesting. So here, I'm, I'm going to explore uh, the, what I asked you, Gavin, to, to put in place, answer our needs. And uh, well, we didn't, didn't use it full blast now. Yeah. But um, yeah. So, I mean, we can, we can explore other options and, you know, we can bump up access and stuff. I can try to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Re refraining from over-engineering solutions. Oh, that's really hard. That's hard to resist. Oh, it's hard to resist. Okay. Thank you very much for the, 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 the discussion and the, high, the highlight. I'm not sure that I'm using the correct English words. So. Raj, um, Raj, thank you sincerely. Oh, go ahead, Gavin. I was going to say to Raj, one thing that I did find that was really nice early on is they have a chat integration. So we're doing it with Gitter. We're doing it through Matrix because there's no Gitter connection. But, you know, with Slack and everything else, I don't know if you have that enabled, but it's very nice to be able to say that if it's tagged to this post or in this group, we notify that channel. So the people who don't necessarily check all the time or like email get another point of reference as well. Hmm. So, so Gavin, is a Slack integration also possible then? I believe so. I mean, they have plugins for everything. Okay. Um, we're using the hosted version, so we're a little bit more restricted on plugins, but... Out of the box, they have all the features we've ever needed. So, so I may ask for your help on um, investigating a possible Slack integration, just because we're finding that for the SheCode Africa Contributhon participants, yeah, Slack because of their relatively limited bandwidth and their sort of geographic isolation, Slack is currently their preferred communication format, and so. It may be that we, in addition to the Gitter integration, I may come begging you, could we do some way of connecting yeah. the CDF channel that we're using for SheCode oh, Africa Contributes on? would be tricky here, but yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so- Just because uh, of permissions, but it, it shouldn't, shouldn't be hard. Right. And and that was my, my worry was, but that I guess you're okay if I come saying, hey, could we do an experiment with this and try it? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Raj, thank you very much for joining us. Did anyone else have questions for Raj? It's it's now approaching 11 p.m. your time, Raj. 10 p.m. your time. It's it's bedtime in my world. <laughs> yeah, so you can, me. yeah, you can drop you can drop Raj. Um, so thanks thanks for your time. Yes, thank you so much, Raj, for joining us. You're all right. So I threw yeah, the thanks link. a lot for inviting me to the meeting map and let me know if i want would you want me to join another meeting as well thank you thank you thank you sorry gavin Thanks, you Josh. said uh, i was just going to say i linked i put the link to the the chat plugin in zoom chat so if we want to add that to the notes i would but it do that. says not only does it have slack support but it has amazing slack support so that's good news <laughs> Okay. It has like a little matrix of features and Slack is at the top with the full bar. So great. All right. Okay. So I think since you're already talking, Gavin, you want to talk about the next topic? Let us know how you're doing. And thanks for all your work with that. I know it's it's a huge job. Yeah, it's a lot of hurry up and waiting because I'm running. Oh, I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll do a quick demo. I'll do it that way. Um, so essentially, I've been trying to make it so that um, it's not manual work for most of it. It's a lot of uh, automation because that means I can rerun it, re-export it, whatever else we need to do without much issue. So let me share my screen. 
Okay. The same thing I showed quickly to Mark yesterday. We're doing that screen. So, uh, oh, Zoom put it over there. Um, so uh, I've got the majority of the site complete. So, uh, you know, I've been trying to keep notes in Discord for what uh, where the status is. One thing I did notice uh, this week is that there's a distinction between um, case studies and user stories. And I didn't notice that early on. So that's something I'm going to have to come back and fix. So all the user stories are imported. There are a few that have bad, not bad data, but data that didn't map properly in my script. So I'll have to come back and fix them. But for essentially all the user stories are now imported. Um, you can see here that some of them have like extra colons and stuff. So like I said, I'll have to come back and clean it up. Um, but yeah, so I'm able to go through, you know, and I added a toolbar here at the top to jump through them so that I could test very easily because it's, it was very annoying to go back, click the next one, go back, click the next one. I wanted to make sure I could skim through them. So we can remove this before we go live, but I kind of like being able to jump through user stories and see the next one and the next one. And it's very fast. So, you, you know, the WordPress site takes like a minute to start and this is already ready to go. I love that. Like looking at mag magazine, you're you're flipping yeah. the pages. If yeah, um, I think this could be a little bit fancier. So, you know, if, if someone wants to put like a nicer icon or something, but yeah, it's very nice to be able to just go here and go, oh, you know, these are all the stories and keep going. And, you know, yep. so I thought it was nice, but it was really for me testing, but I'm wanting to keep it because it's useful. Um, but for the most part, uh, this, the content is all done and imported. Uh, the trick was that we wanted to have the quote like in the middle of the paragraph. So when I go show the actual data for it, you'll see it's a little bit trickier than, you know, like a general CMS, but I think it's still within reason and still, you know, doable. Um, so the, the next thing I'm going to do is, or, and the map is working. I think I showed that uh, off in the past. So it links directly. So each story you add, you can add a map data. So like, um, the coordinates and it'll just show up in the pin, you know, you don't have to do this twice. Mm -hmm. And we do have this. Yeah. So the front page, all stories, you can go through and look at all of them and find the one you want. And I didn't paginate it or anything. I figured it wasn't going to be used very often. So might as well just have everything on the one page and then the map. Um, so I'm going to add case studies. So that's my plan for probably next week. Um, catch that up. It should be relatively straightforward, the same thing I've done already, but just got to parse everything. But uh, then on the weekend, I started playing with Netlify CMS. So in theory, it's a, it's a drop-in tool that you can use to, uh, you, or like so essentially what we're doing with a static site where you edit YAML or Markdown or whatever else in this, this little tool and it does GitHub flow. And as Mark and I tested yesterday, it doesn't quite work right now. So I'm gonna have to come back and, and finish the, 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 the integration. But essentially you should be able to, oh, I don't even know what that one does, but essentially you should be able to go new story and get a new story. You can see how it bro I broke it here. So it doesn't actually quite work yet, but you can edit a post. So you come in here and so it's, this is pulling directly from GitHub. This is all the user stories that are on GitHub right now. Mm -hmm. And then you can click on any one of them and get into it. And I made sure to hook up the preview. So the exact same page layout is in the, the UI. So you can make changes. You can literally make changes as you go. And well, not that one. You can see how it gets updated right away. Wow. And then, uh, so like I said, uh, for the paragraphs, the body paragraphs, I had to kind of make it a little awkward. So each paragraph is a, another block. But... So it's not the most intuitive, but it means that what I'm saying is the the quote is after the third one. So that you know that's one one way to kind of keep that same flow mm -hmm. without making it too complicated. But it does mean that yeah, you can make multiple paragraphs. There's no reason you couldn't just you know make this paragraph multiple lines. It doesn't care. It just means that the quote gets moved down. So we can, you know, address that. Like I said, this is all a script um, that takes the raw data and imports it again. So if we decide, hey, this is stupid, I just want to have, you know, like quote and then the entire body, it would take me like 10 minutes to change the script and re-export. So that's why I want that script there. So I can re-export, re-export without doing much changes. Um, in theory, this, you can hit save and it doesn't work. We tested it yesterday. Um, there's, a, there's some sort of bug, but in theory, this should hit save and create a new GitHub pull request. Um, so it, it's all done through GitHub. You can, you can review the post before you approve it. 
Um, and I have the same things that we hooked up for Jenkins IO. It does a preview site, so you can go see the thing live. All that stuff that we have already should work. Um, I will spend some time to uh, fix the thing probably this weekend or next week. I'm just trying to take a break because I've been doing this for, and I want to oh, have a yeah. couple of plugin site stuff I want to work on. So I'm just taking yeah. a little break from it. But I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, honestly, there's no reason right now we couldn't even uh, cut over. I mean, it works. The, like I said, the data isn't perfect, but it's good enough that we could cut over if you wanted to shut down the old WordPress stuff. But yeah, so that's, you know, my high level demo of this really quickly. I love it. Thank you so much. I, I think it looks great. It's so fast. Yeah. I mean, yeah. One thing I like about Gatsby quite a bit. And a picture of awesome, Gavin. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Alyssa on the cutover point, when is it that Jenkins is the way.io WordPress hosting stops? Are we already stopped or is, are they still hosting that site until end of month? You know, how they're still hosting the site. I think they automatically charge me for, to renew the account. Um, mm. So the domain itself is already, I already paid for it. Uh, that was beginning of the year. But um, I think it was the WordPress that is probably end of this month. So, okay, so I have to check the date, the exact date. Okay, but but we've got, so I guess I could just check. I mean, the site is still there, Jenkins is the way.io. So we've got at least, it's likely we've got at least till end of April before we, we need to take over that DNS entry and redirect it to stories.jenkins.io. And Damien could do that really quickly and easily. So you can work with him. He has access to Netlify. This is running through Fastly. So, you know, we can do all that stuff. We can even have both domains working for as long as you want. Uh, the URL scheme should match. Um, that was the nice thing about spinning it into a new site. So literally you could just add the domain to this site and it should still work. Okay, so I'm not sure. So I was, I was assuming a very simple minded that we would do some sort of a redirect of Jenkins is the way.io, but that's, you're saying something smarter than that. I'm, I'm saying I'm it's up to you. Uh, if you just wanted to take Jenkins is the way.io, plop it on this site and be done. That's it. It work. Um, oh, okay, good. So if, if we have the DNS record point to this look to stories.jenkins to the same location that is stories.jenkins.io, that will work. Yeah, no, we'll have to do a few configuration changes, but they're fairly minor. Um, okay. I do think uh, what we will want to do then is modify the site to have a canonical URL, which is just a little meta tag at the top. And that'll make search results better because right now, if, if you have two sites with the same content, Google goes, ah, cloning sites, this is fake. Cheaty, um, cheaty. Yeah. So you, there's a couple of things, you, tricks you can do there and say, hey, you know, do a redirect. And then when we're happy with it, we can tell Netlify to say, hey, redirect it to this site. Like we can do all these things later on, but it doesn't okay. stop us from the, the start. Excellent. All right. Thank you. So uh, I just need to connect with Damien and the infra team and then have a conversation with you and them to be sure we do the right things. I think that's what you're saying. More or less. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Excellent. Thanks so much, Gavin. Yeah. So I'll keep, you know, plugging away at this, but I think as it is, it's ready to be used. Um, okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah, thanks, 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 thanks. I don't know how many way, ways to say thank you, Gavin, for all that you've done on that site. That, that, that is, I had assumed we were just going to get a static site that was some copy. And what you've given us is a data-driven website that now has an editing front end on it so people can submit stories. And, and we've got a way to continue doing Jenkins is the way yeah. as your CMS comes alive. We can keep doing Jenkins is the way without paying the consulting company to do that stuff. It just comes in as pull requests now. Yeah, I well, I asked early on what the, what we wanted. It was just take a dump. You know, do we want to be able to add new stories? And there was a lot of like, mm, this would be cool if we could do this. I'm like, why not? Because um, as much as it looks like it's a lot of work, um, I learned a lot about Gatsby in general, which I'm going to be applying back to plugin site. Uh, I have a couple ideas I want to make. The more we did this, the more I realized that, uh, I think I was talking to Mark about it. There's no reason we can't start pulling other sites apart as well. So Jenkins IO is huge and overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason we can't say the blog is a new site. So blog.jenkins.io. And then that gets managed separately and stuff like that. 
So the more I did this, the more I learned about Gatsby, the more I learned about data stuff, the more I learned about Netlify CMS. You know, I now have a way to parse HTML so much nicer uh, using open source off the shelf tools, but just, you know, I learned from it. So that's why I kept going back to it because I'm like, oh, I wonder what would happen if I try this. And then I'm like, oh, this works. Okay, well, how do I apply this back to other projects? So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you. glad we were able to help. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you. Yeah. Can't say thanks enough. So, okay. So, moving on. Let's see. Um, so, Mark, you have on your AI list to remove. Yeah, uh, I, haven't, I haven't done it yet. Sorry. Yeah. I will okay. do it. I guess Mark, do you want me to take that over? No, because I want this excuse to 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 take that out. And I've got to do a blog post on Shikot Africa. I'm going to be on that site anyway. So so let me okay. just handle that one. But Gavin, are you okay if we if I if I well, should we include in this a link to stories.jenkins.io or is it premature? I, I think it's, not. it's there and we could make it there and just say, hey, the Jenkins is the way stories now are stories.jenkins.io and I yeah. put it up there as a, as a replacement page. So the only issue is right now there's no case studies and we're going to, I'm going to have to figure out where to put that, but I don't think that's a okay. big blocker. I, yeah. I don't, I, yeah, yeah, I would love to have somebody complain that that was somehow. <laughs> <laughs> they won't even know. Yeah. And you know, it won't take me long to get there. Like I said, until Friday, I didn't realize there were two different types of posts, so it won't take long. Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, Alyssa, John, Mark, thank you for the offer, but I think I'm going to go ahead and, well, actually, no, maybe, maybe I should reconsider John, Mark, which, no, but okay. I, I don't want to sacrifice Google summer of code is my challenge. John, Mark, this one, but, I don't mind if this waits and, and. Okay. Just tell me because I will enter a tunnel uh, of two weeks. So if you want me to do it tomorrow, just let me know. Okay, yeah, let, let's just keep it on me for now. I think yeah. I, I don't want to risk derailing Google Summer of Code. That is much more important and much more time sensitive than this thing is. If, yeah. if I have to be embarrassed but, in two weeks that I still haven't done it, it'll just be embarrassing, not, not risky. Okay, the Google Summer of Code is, is currently on track. Right, thank you. Okay, <laughs> that's it for me then on, action, on failure to do action items, Alyssa, thanks. No worries, thank you. Um, next item is uh, the Ukraine image or support for Ukraine and the Jenkins project. I know there's been lots of discussions on that. And Mark, thank you for creating those pull requests. I know we're taking votes for um, either the Cossack image or the, uh, the Jenkins stop the war image. So I think so far the Cossack is getting more votes. Is, am I right? Oh, I need to cast my vote. Yeah, it, the it voting is, is on GitHub. And, uh, yeah, you just you could read the email list in that communication on the user mailing list. It says, Here. "Please just go. You give us a thumbs up on on the one you want on GitHub." We got one email list reply from a a person in Ukraine mm -hmm. saying, "Hey, I prefer the Cossack," and then a comment, a barbed comment about the International uh, Red Cross, and I'm ignoring the barbed comment about the International Red Cross. I'm just, just flat ignoring it. Okay, I think um, I checked the CDF uh, website. They, I, they probably alternate or they change the foundations. Um, the last time I checked it was the, the International Red Cross, and now I think I saw uh, UNICEF. So they probably change the foundations oh, every now oh, and then. Didn't... I didn't know they had changed it. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Which is, I thought it was interesting that, you know, giving, um, that we're not just focusing on one charity donation, uh, foundation, but alternating because there's just so many. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else you want to add there, Mark? No, that's it. Okay. Um, we, can, we can throw into Jean-Marc that, uh, this is another one where Discord could come up, discourse could come in handy because it does have voting and very bright yeah. voting as well. Yeah, and easier. Yeah, I love the fact that I was able to initiate the discussion, add images, and be able to see the thread of replies and such on 
discourse, what I initiated this discussion. So I really like that a lot. Right. And it was super easy to do. We were talking in, in the governance yesterday. I'm always looking for excuses to use discourse. The more we pull people in, the more you know, advantage. A discourse does have a poll feature. So you can actually have it at the top of the page and say A or B, and you can get graphs to see which one it is and stuff. So for future, hopefully this will never, this specific case will never come up again, but it doesn't good to know that you can do polls really quickly. And I think Mark and I tested it last year for some stuff, so. Right, and, and Alyssa, that's one of those where, oops, I should have, I was in a hurry to do the, the mailing list thing. I should have used discourse to do this poll because it would have been easier, more elegant, simpler, and has all sorts of benefits for us. But but I, I missed that opportunity. I will not miss it again. When I have the next chance like this, I will use discourse for polling. That's okay. I mean, I mean, honestly, the more we just talk about things, the, the less it'll slip. So, you know, it's not like you did the wrong thing. It's just, hey, by the way, you know, yeah this is why we need the leaderboard to incentivize we, people to use this course arguably that's the big issue with stack overflow but yeah yeah it's, making fun mark is thumbs up being but muted okay yeah just uh, yeah go ahead Alyssa. next topic we, okay. we've we've thrashed this one all right um, so GSOC update, we have had two brainstorming uh, sessions for Git cache maintenance on the controller. And the meeting notes are linked there, plus the recordings are linked there. Um, and then this morning, Jean-Marc, you had the second uh, brainstorming session for the plugin health scoring. How did that go? That went uh, very well, uh, good attendance. So we have one contributor but uh, three and a half uh, mentor, if I count myself Lucky. as a half mentor. So a very good session. And I think, as we say here, there's music in that story. So not just noise. Good. So I'll, um, I'll check out the recording. Hopefully everything went well this time and I'll get it posted <laughs> for you. Um, <laughs> And since this morning, since I checked, we have we still have four submissions yep. through the Google Web app, and I've listed those submission titles there. Right. What what is comments 3, there? What is three D waiter? I assume I spam. I suggest that you read it. Okay. <laughs> it's it's interesting. Okay. Yeah. I, I no, read it briefly, bad. just just like a, the the abstract of it. It's a little bit related to like when you go to into a restaurant now, they don't have the physical menu, but they have the QR code, and you take a picture, you scan it, and you get the. So this is a little bit of a, an expansion of that, which is very related to Jenkins, <laughs> because I'm, he's a butler. <laughs> okay, stop it. This is spam, Mark. Mark is a spam. Okay. We're trying to okay, rescue. Got it. it. Sarcasm, now, sarcasm detected. Finally, it took me long enough. Finally detected. Okay, got it. But, but I, I don't want to be too hard. Uh, important to note there. It seems that some of the contributors run into difficulties to register on the Ooh. Google uh, site. Uh, Duraj has this problem, so uh, I invited Duraj and others uh, to mention it on Gitter uh, and to interact with uh, Google support uh, for there. And, and so uh, uh, we need to be um, attentive to that mm -hmm. and maybe elicit reactions. On. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed by the low number of submissions. So, uh... well, but but we're not at. I mean, we're not at submission deadline yet, mm -hmm. and we haven't Correct. completed our reviews yet. So, I'm mm -hmm. I'm actually not overly worried about the current. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, we yeah. reviewed good, good uh, proposal. Sorry, Alyssa, go ahead. No, no worries. So, um, Google's Google's note is that people tend to wait towards the end. Uh, of the, the 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 submission phase to sub make submissions, so they said it's expected, and we should expect for more to come in as we get closer to the nineteenth of April. 
Well, and, this and is... we may need to correct a misperception that I had, that others may have the same misperception. I thought in previous years you could submit your PDF once and that was it. But this year you can submit the same PDF, you can submit updates to the PDF and it just replaces it. And so, right. so there's not a penalty for them if they submit early and then resubmit an improved proposal during the proposal time frame. So I'll, I had I'll missed send, that. I'll, I'll send that on the list. Mm, thanks. Uh, to, to tell the people. So I'll, I'll mention the connection issues and uh, the, the resubmission. Yeah, and I think the connection issue, uh, Jean-Marc, oh, when they first listed, when Google first listed the, um, the accepted mentoring organizations, we also had a similar issue where yeah. it took a really long time for us to, for them to load the screen. Yeah. Dharash yeah, so, said that he had a running wheel that kept running. Yeah. And, and I was telling Mark the other day, I, I'm finding that I thought Google was perfect, but what, what do I know? But I, I'm running, I, you know, I'm running into conflicting information and issues. And it, they're saying it takes about, give them a week plus to, to resolve something. Hmm. So keep that in mind. Spikes in traffic are always hard to deal with no matter who you are. Yeah. So, I mean, Google could have, you know, spent a lot of time and money to throw servers at it, but they probably have it auto scaling. So, you know, as traffic spikes, they have to spin up new servers and it takes time and have that. And then yeah. it drops off again because nobody's using it and then it would waste money. So I think they just handle that spike and keep going. I yeah. see. Makes sense. Okay, so I've listed a couple of um, upcoming milestones or due dates for us here. Draft proposals are due, um, well, draft proposal reviews are due to uh, the 9th, the 9th. And yep. then application period is the 4th to the 19th. Mentoring grading period. So that is really important for us. And that is April 20th to the 30th. And then for us org admins, um, the important date is May 12th to support to submit our ranking and our number of um, slots uh, that we're requesting. Yeah. And then May 19th is when Google will let us know how many um, projects we will receive or how many contributors yeah. we will receive. And then Anything starts else? the second thing. Yeah, um, we're organizing a mentor meets uh, where we're going to explain and uh, brief them on the grading phase yeah. because we want that to be done with uh, big care and honesty. Yeah, and we will start that early next week and um, following the, uh, the grading period. Yeah. So more meetings to be had. Um, she code Africa, Mark, I have here seven contributors for six weeks started April 5th. Anything else that we like to add? So first meeting is today in first, first meeting of, of the contributors. We've been very active in conversations in Slack already. The Slack channel is the preferred channel right now because that's what's worked well, what worked for them well for them last year. We had tried several other formats and it just didn't register with them nearly as well as Slack did. I don't know if that's because their universities are using Slack or if, if the Slack does a better job in Africa with bandwidth management or what it is. But for right now, I'm assuming we'll continue on the Slack channel as the primary communication vehicle. Uh, we certainly need more mentors. The docs office hours team is going to, has agreed to be mentoring but it means we're still a little bit shorthanded. Angelique Jard has agreed to help and I'm recruiting several others. They need to be, the best situation is if they're Europe-based. Mm. Uh, and, and so we've got good candidates that I know in Europe that I'll be, I'll be chatting with to see if we can get help. Three projects, inclusive naming is one project. So getting rid of the usages of master, slave, whitelist, blacklist, hmm. um, and there was one other, I think that was on our, on our target. And then 
second project is pipeline help like we did last year. Third project is, oh dear, help me out. Translations. Third, oh yeah, uh, oh no, third project is, is it pipeline help. Who's, oh, I, I, how embarrassing, this is sad that I can't remember the third project, but three projects. And then we've got a project manager assigned. So one person who will be acting as my, my, my right arm, yep. if you will, doing, doing project management tasks. And, and we're going to try this this year and hope that it works better than last year so that there's less chance of us overloading the mentors and better chance of successful get, successfully getting good results out. That's it for me, Alyssa. Great, thank you. Um, the last item I have is CDCon. The Jenkins Award nomination is still open. Um, it will close on April 11th. I, I think I saw three submissions for the Jenkins project, um, if I'm not mistaken. No, no, there have been, nope. there, there are more than that. So there's been one submission for the security award, three or four for the most valuable contributor and three or four for the most valuable advocate. Were those um, submitted via the pull request, Mark? Because I- they, This year, they instead of pull requests, they use it, or I think that may have been the same way they use issues, but yeah, in the mm. issue, you, you can see them. Okay. All right. And then um, I am trying to negotiate with CDF if we can do the contributor summit on the Thursday instead of a Friday, because then we can fly home on Friday, um, but waiting for them to respond. Great. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And we discussed that in, in board, governor's board, governance board. Oleg noted he won't be there. Yeah. Uh, Gavin won't be there. I plan to be there. And, mm -hmm. and Alyssa, I think you yeah. plan to be there. So yes. we're going to go ahead and lay out the plans, do it. And we may be mostly local people from Austin if necessary. And that'd be okay as well. Yeah. Evelyn now won't either. Sorry, what was that? Evelyn now won't either. Right. Oh, right. Evelina, yeah, Evelina Vilkos from, from, I think she's based in the Netherlands currently. So from Northern Europe also won't be there. Right. Okay. All right. That's it on the agenda. Thank you very much. It was a busy session. It was. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gavin, again for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.